Today, I'm going to walk through a completed budget manager inside of Notion using the zero-based budget method. If you liked my personal cash flow template I made some months ago, I did use the feedback from that video to create this budget manager. Here are some of the components of the template. A robust budget table with a ton of examples to get started, a total and monthly balance, a review of monthly spending and earning activity, like I said, this will be a zero-based budget in that the total balance at the end of every month will be automatically allocated to a savings portal. Thus, the monthly balance will be at zero at the end of every month. These allocated savings can be customized. Let's get right into it. So, there are four different databases in this system. The first of which is the balance. This is giving you the total balance of all of your spending and earning. The other three databases are the budget database, the months database, and the cash flow database. All of these databases connect to one another. And I'll show you how. So let's first start with the budget database. I'm going to zoom in a couple times. So what we have here are some broad budget items like property, insurances, utilities, stuff like that stuff that you want to assign a budget to on a monthly basis. For instance, in this example, property, the budget is $1,300 a month. That might include rent, repairs, stuff like that. And at the bottom of the table, you're gonna see the sum of all of your budget items. To add new budget items, you're just gonna press this new button and add a new budget item. Let's say this one is investment let's say $130. And by pressing this one, two, three button inside of a number cell, you're able to change the type of currency. In the example template, it is using the US dollar, but there are a ton of other options to choose from. So if I were to go into investment, I can come in here and add an icon. And I am using a website called Super.so Icons. And here you'll be able to get some nice minimal free icons. I'll leave a link down below in the description. You'll notice some other properties inside of the budget. There is the budget column, of course, where you're assigning a monthly budget. A total, this is a rollup, and I'll explain what rollups do. But what this rollup needs is a connection to the cash flow database. And what the total will do is give you, for example, the total amount of money you've spent on the property item, like rent. See, that's one of the items here associated with property is rent. Now this O slash U formula is just telling you that you are either over, under, or in budget according to your monthly average. Now let's take a look at how this is interacting with that cash flow database. Going back to the home page and clicking on cash flow. This is a master database. There are four different database views, the two main ones being earnings, everything coming in, and spending, everything going out. Some of the properties here, first you'll notice that the name property says spend. That's because inside of my filter, I have I slash O or in slash out is out or spending, and the name contains spend. The reason why I did this is because of a request I was given. Instead of putting inside of this name property something like electric and gas, and every month repeatedly typing in electric slash gas bill or groceries. My workaround for that is to create a select property, and in item, you're going to have a lot of different options that you can add to, take away from. I recommend customizing this for yourself. And this is where you're telling the database entry what exactly you're spending this money on. So you're getting more specific. Right next to that, you have the budget item. You'll notice this little arrow here. This indicates that it is a relation property and is connecting to that budget table. Utilities is from that budget table. I can even have a little window through to the budget table that shows me if I'm over or under budget. The budget, the monthly average, the total, and everything else. Then we have the tags. There is small bill, daily living, big bill, or debt. This property isn't super important, but it is important for a template I'm using inside of the months database. 
but that's really just purely aesthetic. So you can always go ahead and change this. Then there is the amount property. Of course, this is the amount you're spending on a particular item and the date you're doing it. Some of these dates aren't just a single date. Some of them are date ranges. This is because you may want to just broadly state how much you spent on a particular item throughout the whole month. Maybe you spend money on this every day or multiple times a week and you don't wanna keep inputting two, three times a week how much you're spending on something. So here I have all subscriptions and that's just by toggling this end date. Next to that, there is another relation property, and this is going to the months database. And no, you do not have to do this manually. That's what the months database is for. Then there's the I slash O select property, which is just indicating whether this is money going out or money coming in. And then just some notes to the side here, if you want to clarify. Looking at the earnings database view, it's a little bit different, but is pretty much the same thing. We have the name in every instance you add to this database view, the name contains income and the money is coming in. The date again and a relation to the month's database. I do have some sample data that I want to insert into this table to show you how it kind of works. Okay, so let's just copy and paste some of this over. There we go. So if I wanted to quickly add things through the master database, I would go through to the budget item. I believe I have a budget item called gifts and my budget is $40 a month. So I am a little bit over budget, but that's okay. Health insurance, I have a budget item called insurances and clothes would be something like personal care and dining would be food. I'll put in the dates that I made these purchases or just put a range for the whole month. You'll notice that some of them shifted. That's because I have a sort in place just so that the earliest date is at the top. Now, if I am putting this stuff through the master database, I do have to connect to a month. There we go. Now you'll notice if I go into food, and click through, I'm now within my budget database. And I have two items. And the total amount I've spent thus far is $236 because I only have one month in my system. The monthly average also being $236. And I am under budget. Let's go back to the cash flow. I just pressed Command P to quickly change pages. And let's go back to cash flow. Another thing I want to share is that whenever you do put in a date range just for generally the whole month, inside of the master calendar on the front page, you do have all of your spending and earning activity. You'll notice that all the date ranges are omitted. They aren't showing here. That's because I created a formula called range. I just wanted to make sure I excluded these items because it would just become a little bit too cluttered and that formula just looks like this. I'm just making sure the date between the end and the start of date is greater than zero days. All formulas are going to be available in the documentation page so you guys can copy and paste or take a look at formulas there. And let's take a look at the months database. Months is what budget is connected to and months is also connected to the balance and savings database. So it's a bit like a layer of databases on top of each other. So I only have one example here thus far and that is August 2021. Firstly, I'm going to show the hidden properties. I have two different relations here with this little arrow, both of which are coming from the cash flow database. One is for earnings, the other is for spending. And how I was able to separate these two by going to income here, you'll notice that there are two different relations coming from the cash flow. One is called S dot month and year, that's spending month and year, and E dot month and year, earnings month and year. And the reason why I want to separate these two is because we need to see how much is earned and spent in a given month. I also have a relation to calculator which is to that balance and savings database, which we'll get to. With those two relations, I'm going to roll up two different numbers. One is total earning, total spent. Total earning is configuring the earnings relation 
and calculating the sum. So what rollups do is when you are connecting two databases, you're able to grab values from the database you are connected to like a window. And you're able to actually use something like numbers and calculate with them. The other one is total spent and I'm grabbing the spent relation and calculating the sum of all spending items. I also have a formula called gross balance. This is before allocating to different savings goals and just simply subtracting total earnings from total spent to give you how much you have earned after all of your spending in the given month. I also have three different savings goals. You can always add more. So these three savings goals are taking that total gross balance of 1720 and allocating to each one. For instance, savings goal one, I want 50% of my earnings in a month to be allocated to this goal. So I'm just saying 0.5 times the gross balance. For savings goal two, I want 30%. And for three, I want 2%. Of course, all these percentages add up to 100. Click on the template, new month, to show you what it looks like. At the very top, we have a balance toggle. This is giving you a window into the balance and savings database, which we'll get to in a second. That's giving you, in a nutshell, the total earnings and spending across all months, the total amount that you've put into your savings goals over here for all months as well. Below that, there are a few different windows. And this is what I was using that tags property inside of the cash flow for, for big bills, small bills, debt, and so on. The first window here is called income. Some of the filters here are, I want to make sure that the select property for IO inside of cash flow is in, the name contains income, and the expense month and year contains August 2021. Why I have these filters is because I want to be able to add new income and new spending items within a month's page, which I'll be able to do here. Let's say I have a bonus of $400 on August 12th. Right next to that, I have a window to that monthly budget we saw at the beginning of the video. For small bills, I think there is a small bill here, cable for $60. So what I can do inside of this small bills window is add a cable item, cable. If I don't already have that select property, I can just add it. Budget item would be probably utilities at $60 and on August 12th. Big bills, the exact same thing. Let's add a bit more to this. Daily living, there's quite a few. Dining, eye care, and home repair. And I'll go ahead and assign those budgets as well. You get the idea. You'll notice to the left, there is a calendar, and this is the same calendar you're seeing on the front home page, except with this little calendar, there is a filter that ranges unchecked, that formula I showed you before, and spending month and year or expense month and year contains the current month we're in, which in this case is August, 2021. We also have a debt, which is also a major tag, and a calculator. This is an embed actually to a widget I found online. I'll leave a link down below if you wanna get your own. Really, really nice for a template like this. So how do I automatically connect these items to the month that I'm in? So this is what the template is for. So if I go to the month's database, there is that template new month, and I can go ahead and edit it, and you can edit it as well. And what this does is every filter, like I showed you before, inside of the template, instead of saying that relation, say for spending month and year contains August, 2021, I'm saying it contains the template's name, new month. It will replace new month with whatever month is the name of that card. Let's add the next month, September, 2021. First thing I can do is click that new month template. Everything should load in, except now all of the database windows should be empty to start filling out. So again, what this is doing is replacing that new month with the current month I'm in, September, 2021. Let's go back to the cash flow. I wanna show you those two other database views 
that I haven't shown you yet. So other than spending and earning, we have average spending and average earning. So these are just a couple of examples on how you can visualize data in different ways in Notion. If you're familiar with Excel or spreadsheets, this is something like a pivot table. So we're pivoting everything to look at information based off of items like water and sewage bill or the internet bill or phone bill, groceries, and I'm just grouping. I can group by tag, I can group by in and out, and this is a board view. So if you go to these three dots, board view will be checked. You can always add more views through this blue button here. Next to each item, you're going to have a few different options. You can find the sum of whatever number property you have in your table, or I can see the average amount I spend on water and sewage and the internet bill and groceries and things like that. I can find, you know, the median, the minimum, the maximum, the range. You can go ahead and look through all of those options. You can also add a filter. Let's say I want to see how much I've spent on average on an item between two different dates. So I can say date is on or before an exact date and on and after another specific date, right? And I can get a range. I have another one for earning. You can also add a linked database view and create these board views, maybe on your homepage. So going forward slash linked, create a linked database, and I can search for cash flow. And I'll get a little window into my cash flow database. So for linked database views, and I can add a different view, can add a board view. For linked databases, every time you add a new item, it will affect the master database, the original database. However, if you add different filters, different sorting methods, different database view types like a calendar, down here is an example, that master calendar is a linked database view, it will not affect the master. I have two formulas within these months, you'll notice, two formulas called currently and this year. I'm gonna show you what I wanna use these for. So for currently, I wanna make sure whatever month and year is this card's name is currently the month and year. Let me zoom in a couple times. I haven't done formulas in a while, so I really wanted to share this one with you. So for currently, for this, I'm going to use the contains function. Contained within name property, which is the title, I want to find what is today's month and year. So I wanna check the title for it. So I'm gonna say format date of right now and format it to four uppercase M space four uppercase Ys. And this is what it should look like. It is not currently September, 2021, but if I go to August, 2021, it should be ticked, which it is. Now let's see how I can determine if this card is just simply within this year. I can do something very similar. Contains in name is formatting the date of now. Two, four uppercase Ys indicating the year. And there we go. And looking again at everything put together, we had the budget that connected to the cash flow, the cash flow that connected to the months, and now the months connect to the balance. This is again just one row. And this one row is giving you the total earnings of all months, and it is giving you the gross balance. And that is just taking the starting amount and adding the total earnings and also all of your savings goals and how much are allotted overall to each one through all of the months and the total saved. That's just adding each savings goal. Of course, if you add more savings goals, you will need to adjust this formula and the master calendar, which omits range dates. And you can flip through each month through here. And that's about it. That is the entire budget manager. 
let's go right into the outro. So if you haven't already navigated down to the description, there are two templates there. There's going to be one for light mode, one for dark mode, and both are available with the option to donate. Other than that, I'll see you guys the rest of the week on Twitter and next week with a new video. I'll see you then.